Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Radifa Kabir and today we have with us Dr. Vishal Rai, who has been awarded a Vigyan Yuva in Chemistry. Hello Dr. Rai, welcome to The Print. Hi, uh, good evening and thanks for having me. Good evening and many congratulations on winning the prestigious Vigyan Yuva Award. Thank you very much. So before we begin the interview, I would like to tell all of you a bit about Dr. Rai. Now, Dr. Rai is a professor in organic chemistry and chemical biology at IISER Bhopal. His areas of research include developing chemical toolboxes to re-engineer proteins and using them in protein and antibody-based therapies. Re-engineering proteins is beneficial to ensure targeted delivery. So Dr. Rai, please tell us about the nature of your work and what research won you this award? So uh, when we started our independent research at ISA Bhopal, uh, one key question that we were trying to address is to see if we can develop a chemical toolbox that can allow us to engineer proteins and antibodies and then uh, redesign them for properties that are needed for various applications. So uh, the first few years of investigation basically went into understanding the rules and regulations that define uh, these modifications. And then we were able to establish certain technological platforms that now constitute a comprehensive uh, technology for engineering these proteins and antibodies. And uh, that is what is probably recognized by uh, the committee that uh, finally uh, gave us the Shanti Swarup Bhagnagar Award. Yeah. Yes. So, can you please elaborate the chemical toolboxes you were referring to? So, practically, if you think of any machinery, um, you know, you can engineer certain functions and properties. Uh, if you can, for example, uh, just take an example of uh, building blocks and if you want to attach them uh, to construct a certain architecture and that architecture can be utilized for delivering a certain function. Uh, in the same way, uh, if you take a protein or an antibody, uh, it has certain functions, but if you want to use them for therapeutics, you will have to install few additional functions that it does not have. And for installation, of uh, these additional functions, you would need a chemical toolbox. And if you can do it in a precise way without damaging the inherent properties of these biomolecules, uh, then the job is literally done. And that is exactly what we were looking at uh, with this chemical toolbox. Yes. So can you please explain what is precision engineering of proteins and how does it contribute to science and society? Also, what is the use of protein engineering in antibody-based therapies? So, um, when it comes down to the therapeutics, uh, it's uh, a very well-investigated segment where you would realize that some of the uh, fastest growing drug segment in the, this field is actually coming from the biopharma segment, which means uh, the molecules that are used for therapeutics they have biological origin. So if just for an example, you can think of insulin being one of the uh, drugs. Insulin is a protein which is used uh, very frequently uh, in India. Uh, then you have antibody-based drugs. Uh, now, uh, these insulin and antibody-based drugs are not used as such. They are not just proteins. There are additional features attached to them. And those additional features uh, have to be attached uh, through, uh, you know, certain type of connections. And these connections have to be created chemically. Uh, so, yeah, so th these are the things that we have been doing. But did I answer your question? i sorry, I missed uh, probably the initial part. Yeah, what the was initial the part question? was to explain in simple language what precision engineering of proteins means. So precision engineering of proteins literally means that once you have expressed a protein or once you have made a protein or an antibody, um, you know, you can actually uh, stitch whatever you have to on the surface of these molecules in a very specific fashion. So if you want to attach it at one specific place, 
uh, that is what it should be able to allow you to do. So yesterday we had a conversation on the phone where you were explaining to me that in order to treat cancer, such protein-based therapies are used. For instance, any cell or any tumor, it consists of certain kinds of cells. These are called antigens. And to attack these antigens, antibodies are required. You said that immunologists and biologists develop these antibodies. However, the antibodies are not toxic enough to kill the tumor cells. Therefore, a toxic material has to be installed into the antibodies. And that's where your role comes in. So can you please yeah. explain that? Yeah, so this is a one part of what we do. Um, just to elaborate it a little. So what happens is if you just look at one very specific example for, um, in, in this case, you can consider trastuzumab, uh, which is an antibody-based drug right now in the market. And then it is used for uh, treating HER2 positive breast cancer patients. So in India, in, in fact, if you notice the biosimilars that came recently, uh, uh, they are biosimilars of trastuzumab. Uh, now, um, the point is that these antibodies are highly specific in detecting these antigens that are there on the tumor cells, but not on the normal cells. So that's that's their one feature that they have, and they're very good at it. it. Means they can go and target tumor without really harming the normal cells at all. But um, they, as you rightly pointed out, they are not toxic. Uh, to a very good extent, which means you will have to give a lot of antibody to the patient to actually kill those tumor cells. And that is one problem uh, because what happens is that because of this high dosage, um, often it, you know, patients who are suffering from her to positive breast cancer would develop resistance against these antibodies. So now the state of the art technological platform is to see if we can still use the antibody for getting the specificity towards the tumor cell but uh, take the role of killing from the antibody and give it to another molecule that's highly toxic in nature so now antibody does not have a burden to kill these cells so you do not have to give a lot of it and it will still take the toxin that is connected to it all the way till the tumor and then uh, once it reaches there it can go inside the cell leave the toxin into the cell and then the toxin will do the job of the killing and that's way more efficient um, you know route for actually taking care of uh, the tumors uh, with much lesser drug loading yes so is there a chance that the antibodies affect other cells the cells which are not on target so uh, see there are two reasons why it can happen if it happens uh, one would be if so the, the antibodies know how to bind with antigens so there are certain cases where antigens are going to be heavily overexpressed in tumor and not at all in normal cells and in those cases normal cells will be completely unaffected uh, but there are certain other cases where it can happen that the uh, antigens are somewhat expressed in the normal cells as well. Now, these are not the ideal cases uh, quite often uh, to be targeted uh, by the antibody-based treatment, uh, unless there is no other therapy available that's as specific as this. So um, those are the uh, dimensions where you have to take a call. If it is a fatal disease anyway, um, and the patient's survival rates are poor, uh, then you would still go with little non perspective But uh, means antibodies are the benchmark of how specific you can be with the directed therapeutics. Apart from cancer, what other therapeutics can these be used? In what other therapeutics can these be used? And what other diseases can be treated with these antibody-based therapies that you devise using chemical toolboxes? So, for us, um, you know, there are multiple dimensions and actually can be addressed. Uh, we do not aim to address all the dimensions. And uh, uh, the idea that we are looking into is to develop this core chemical toolbox uh, and translate it to one or two dimensions that we can uh, within the next few years. 
uh, while uh, provide access to uh, rest of the scientific community uh, and they can utilize it for addressing various other diseases. So it can translate to multiple diseases wherever you have an antigenic molecule and then there are many in the list. Uh, it's just that for um, targeting different diseases, it takes a lot of resource per pipeline and uh, it becomes impossible for an academic group actually to go beyond um, a certain point and forget about going to the multiple disease dimensions. So we do have a startup that is looking into a translational aspect of one very specific antibody drug conjugate and one very specific antibody fluorophore conjugate for image guided tumor surgery. Uh, but um, then the, uh, the toolbox is right now available to the other biopharma companies as well through our startup. And in fact, a couple of uh, Indian biopharmas are already using it. And uh, one um, RNA therapeutics based uh, company is also looking into it. So you can imagine that here we are not talking only about delivering toxins. The job of the antibody is just to deliver something specifically uh, to a particular tissue. And uh, depending on the disease, depending on what organ it affects, you can use the antibody as a delivery platform for uh, tissue specific uh, uh, release of a particular molecule of interest. So this is where things become really collaborative. Um, and uh, we are just initiating working with a company that is into RNA-based therapeutics, uh, into RNA delivery for that matter. But um, in this particular case also, we will be just uh, providing them access to our technological platform and then they will take things forward from there on. Yes. Is there potential for your research to be used in vaccines? Uh, there is. In fact, conjugate vaccines is, uh, again, a very big segment uh, in the vaccine portfolio itself. And uh, in this case, it's just that now you are not talking about antibody. You are talking about a carrier protein, and then you will be connecting antigenic molecules to these carrier proteins so that um, the job of the carrier protein in this case is to just make sure that the overall thing survives for long enough to generate the immune response. Um, and the same question comes into the play. Can you connect them with high specificity? Can you do it in a precise fashion so that you know that uh, every batch of vaccine is not different from each other and you can have a dose control, right? So these are the questions that we can answer, uh, but um, we normally also assess the market demand uh, at a given point uh, and the business aspects related to it uh, before taking certain things forward and certain keeping certain things at the back burner for the time being. Yes. And how far has your research gone from the lab to translation? So a um, few years back, we initiated a startup company called Playbill Tech. Um, and uh, some of our patents are already licensed to Playbill Tech. Uh, it is from last two years generating revenue, working with Indian biopharma, many of them, and uh, providing them uh, solutions in this dimension. Uh, if uh, so, what we are working specifically on is uh, colorectal cancer. There is again an antigen that is expressed on the colorectal cancer. So, so you can. So we do have access to an antibody that is against that antigen, and there is a particular fluorophore or a probe on which you can shine the light and it will glow. Uh, so you, when you attach that with the antibody, antibody takes it to the tumor. And now when a light is shine on a very specific wavelength, uh, then this tube, you know, since it is bound to the tumor, it starts glowing and it becomes easy for the surgeons to actually see uh, what part is tumor and what part is normal cell. So when they are uh, surgically removing the part, they are neither leaving the tumor cells back and at the same time, they're making sure that they are not removing healthy tissues or healthy cells so that the prognosis or the health recovery of uh, the patient after surgery is better. Yes. Is UV light used for this purpose? No, actually near infrared. So uh, near infrared is uh, a light uh, wavelength that will be, uh, it is not harmful for the human cells. So would you like to share something more about your research? So right now we are really excited about, uh, you know, translating what we have already developed 
Uh, so one part of our research group is uh, looking into the translation of the technological platforms, while another part of group is looking into developing new technology. Uh, but um, one thing where we are going uh, really fast, and that's something that I'll be really excited to share with the scientific community as well as uh, uh, gender community uh, at some point, is where we are seeing if we can take small molecules and target proteins very specifically within the living system. Because in that situation, uh, you can imagine that uh, it would be possible, hopefully, to get the specificity of antibody by small molecules. And if that can be done, um, you know, we can really cut down the cost of precision therapeutics to a great, great level. And uh, in the context of the Indian ecosystem, where the affordability of expensive drugs is kind of uh, challenging. Um, you know, this makes a lot of sense to invest efforts in. Thank you so much for the interview. And thank, thank you, you for joining. Thank you very much for having me.